Hi everyone, so today we're going to be deriving the log likelihood function for the Tobin model. Um, just as a reminder, this is the, the data that we're trying to fit, and obviously there's censoring at this, this value, um, which we're going to call C to keep uh, general. But in this case, uh, as you can see, uh, C is equal to zero. Um, we're going to work with a, a latent index, and um, as you can see in this diagram here, the the latent indexes uh, are these red dots here on the, the graph, and so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to basically pretend that the the data points are actually the red data points. We're going to fit a line through that, but then we're going to make a condition that um saying basically saying that when the latent index is below the censored value. And the censored value in our case is c equal to zero. So when the latent dependent variable, so all these um, the the level down here, when when that happens, then it gets censored to the value of c. Um, as you can see, all these points get pushed up here, and then they form this line here, or all these this cluster of data points along here. And that's basically what we're going to work with. Um, and we're going to drive the the MLE for the model, and um, I recommend that you follow along with uh, pen and paper because there's some good principles that we can take out of this um, in terms of splitting a function up and um, the the joint density function, which we're going to come on to. Okay, so the model is YI star. And I'm going to assume that you already have knowledge of normal uh, linear regression modeling and uh, that you're familiar with vector notation. So the, the vector notation we're using here is the, the X and the, the beta. Um, we're also going to assume that uh, epsilon given X is normally distributed with mean zero uh, and variance sigma squared. Um, there are a few ways of writing this model, but this is uh, to me the most simplest. Um, so we're gonna write that yi is equal to the max of the censored value and the latent variable. So this um, this is one way to write it, um, but it's quite intuitive. So it's basically just saying that when the, the latent index or the latent dependent variable is below the value of c, then it gets censored to the value of c. Um, and as as you can see here, all these points get censored to the the value of c, which is this this value here. Um, another way of writing it uh, is simply to say that it's equal to y star if y i star is greater than c, and it's equal to c if y i star less than or equal to c that might be easier for you to to work with but they're exactly the same thing okay so we've now got the the first part out of the way but now i want to take a step back and we're gonna basically derive the the pdf for the normal linear regression model and you're gonna see why we do that in just a moment but let's let's do that first of all so we're gonna this this is um the the cdf that we're gonna start with so um f of y i given x i is this is the identity the prob probability that y is less than or equal to y uh, i given x i now that's just the identity of the the CDF. Um, so we're going to substitute our, our normal linear regression model, which is y equals x i t beta plus epsilon i. We're just going to substitute that in, and remember that's not going to go in here because we're treating this as the observed uh, value that comes in. So the the basically the training uh, or, or the the training data and the the test data that's going to come in here so this is known 
um, whereas this is a stochastic variable and um, this model is representing that. So this is going to come into here. So from here, we just um, can substitute that in. Okay. Um, so the only random component on the left hand side is epsilon because xi is given over here. So we can just substitute uh, or rearrange rather to isolate the, the epsilon on the left hand side of the equation. And once we're at this point, we can just quickly realize that um, uh, epsilon is normally distributed, uh, epsilon given x is normally distributed with variance sigma squared. So if we just divide by sigma, the standard deviation, we can, uh, that's, that's instantly normalized. And we can write this as the, the CDF in this way here. And that's, that's complete for the CDF, but we want to com uh, convert it into the, the, the PDF. And the way we do that is um, recall that this is, this is true. So we're just going to take partial uh, differentials uh, with respect to yi. And when we do that, we end up with, uh, we have to use the chain rule. And uh, remember that when we differentiate this uh, b here, the uppercase, we get the lowercase. Um, and then the inside of the function remains the same. And then uh, differentiating the inside of the function here, respect to yi, we just get one over sigma. And we can just write that simply on the outside like this. And now that's, that's, that's the PDF. And um, now you're gonna see why this is useful. So we can, we can think of the, this, this is now the, the top bit, but this is the um, just a standard regression. Okay, but this is now the top bit that we're thinking about. So the, if we write out the, the PDF, we, we, we want to split up into three parts. So we want to, um, that should be a yi. We're going to split up into three, three separate functions and we can always do this with a, a function. Okay, so the first one we're going to define if yi is less than zero. Second one, when yi equals zero. The third one, of course, when yi is greater than zero. Now, when is, actually, let me, let me keep this slightly more um, general. And we're going to substitute in the value C here for the representing the censored value. So when is yi less than censored value? When do we observe something less than the censored value? Well, it, it doesn't happen at all. So the, the probability is zero. So we, we've thought about this one. Now, let's look at the, the third uh, function now. So when is the yi greater than C? Well, it's when, when it, it's when uh, yi star is greater than uh, C also. So this is, the same case is a normal uh, the the normal regression problem that we've we've just uh, solved over here. So, in other words, the the distribution here, when y i is greater than c, is exactly the same as the distribution of a normal uh, standard regression problem. On a graph, what, what I'm saying is. When, when we're looking at a value above C, this is just a normal regression problem. And so it's got the same distribution. So we've thought about this part too. Now, what about this? Well, this happens when yi star is less than or equal to C. So that's, that's what we need to um, derive now. So, just think about the probability that yi star 
less than or equal to C. Of course, we're given the input data. Well, now why I why I star um, given x i is is normally distributed, and if we recall the the Tobit model, we've got x i t beta plus epsilon i, um, and so the mean of this is x i t beta, um, and the the variance is the the same variance is epsilon i which is sigma squared, because these terms don't have variance when we're given xi. So in order to normalize this equation, we just have to you know, subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation as usual. So let's do that now. And of course, we have to do the same to both sides. And remember, we can divide by the standard deviation because it's a positive number um, with this inequality here. Okay. So this this is simply just a uh, CDF, actually, because this has now been normalized. And I'm just going to note that you, you'll see different notation. Sometimes you'll see it like this. Um, but you may also see it written as one minus like this. Um, I'm going to stick with the, the previous notation um, for now. Okay, so now we've basically derived the whole thing um, because we've, we've now found the, the probability density function for the Tobit model. So if we write it out, in the full part. Remember zero when fi or f1 is uh, when f1 holds. And the next part is, like, let me just write this, yi is less than the standard value c. And the second part of the function we've just derived here. Oh, we'll keep writing zero. The, the case we'll be working with in the TensorFlow implementation will be uh, when it's equal to zero. But we're gonna, the the reason I'm keeping it general, by the way, is so that you know you can apply this to a new model. Um, if you're working with, for example, unemployment uh, or uh, wage data, and you're looking at um, you know some explaining uh, different types of uh, levels of wages with some variables. Um, and for some reason there might be a, a price floor such as a minimum wage law um, and so c is not going to be zero it might be eight dollars an hour or something like that um, and so the the pdf for the third part of the function is the one we derived earlier and that's the entire uh, density function. Now let's just convert this to the, the MLE. Um, so before we do that, we need to make make a indicator function. We're gonna we're gonna this is also known as a, a dummy variable, and we're gonna set it to one if y i equals c, and we're gonna set it to zero if y i is greater than c. In reality, these this can be either way. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, it just depends on how you define this dummy variable. So then the the joint distribution, um, given some new sample data, assuming that the sample data is IID, um, is just going to be uh, like this, as follows. So this is the second part of the function here, remember? Um, we're going to ignore the first part because that's the zero, of course. Um, so let's think about this. This is when y i is equal to c. Well, then our uh, one is going to be producing this dummy variable. So we want to keep this this term, and so we can just put this to the power of d i like this. Um, and then we're going to multiply this by the last part of the function.
and okay let's think about this one also so this is gonna hold when yi is greater than c and that's when the dummy variable is equal to zero and so we can just write this as one minus di this should be um we just think through this for a second that should make sense um so we we want to convert this to a log likelihood function uh, i'm just going to write this as f of y given xi and then parameters we've got beta and epsilon which we're going to optimize um so if we're taking the the log likelihood we're just going to take logs of both sides of course um uh the this mle functions uh you know completely ordinal so um we, we we want to find the maximum and taking the the logs not going to affect the the maximum value so i'm just going to take logs of both sides now and we've we've basically done the entire proof now using log rules remember we add the second term now i'm going to put this one over sigma in front And there we go, that's the the log likelihood function. Um but we're just gonna the last step is just to convert it into the the average log likelihood function. So when we have a new piece of data we can average the 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 likelihood of that. So um let's call this just new function q with n data points coming in. We're gonna have a uh, this is a vector here. We're just going to call it theta just for the the vector uh, parameters um and it's just going to be one over n times sum of this entire thing all right let's see if i can get this to work oh you know what? i'm just going to put it down here <laughs> just like that and let's just put big brackets around this to straight now um that's the that's the entire thing uh done now this should oops this should be down there okay that's the that's the entire average log likelihood function and that's what we're going to be using to optimize the parameters beta and and sigma um for you know to to de deploy this model on our data set which is going to be the uh predicting dividends um this can be used in uh, numerous other settings um i might make a video also uh showing why a normal ols uh, model is going to be biased um and i could also talk about some more uh advanced things like the consistency the asymptotic behavior and, and these things but for now this is all you need that, that'll be an optional video if i do put that out um so in summary this is what we have um it's quite a straightforward uh proof uh, and derivation but uh it's quite a neat one and it's got some nice tricks like when we split the function up and use the dummy variable etc